Hi everyone, it's Erin from UK Sports and today we'll be interviewing James Tracy. It's over to you, Darren. James, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah really good. Thanks. Yourself, Darren? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Coping quite well. So, uh, not too bad so far. What have you been up to? Uh, not much. Probably similar to most most of the lads around the country. Sort of enjoying the nice weather. I think is it helps us massively being able to do our S and C and that sort of stuff in this weather. I think it'd have been a lot tougher for everyone than it already is if the weather was was as uh, was poor as it could have been. So yeah, just been doing that. Some um, some sort of personal development stuff in terms of the PCA helping us out and trying thinking sort of this is probably a good time to try and add some more skills to the bow and that sort of thing. So yeah, just trying to stay busy every way possible really. Sure. Again, have you got any any sort of specific projects you're on at the moment? Yeah, so I've just started a uh, a course in a sort of journalism course, like a general sort of writing and um, sort of broadcasting course. So I'm working with one of the cricket writers with that and he's sort of set me a few little tasks and that sort of thing. And sort of getting the gist and showing me the ropes, that sort of thing. So that's quite quite good fun. Um, and then other than that, just sort of all the stuff Gloss have set me to do and uh, sort of getting out and about and just trying to keep myself active, that's the sort of thing. Yeah, so you'll be able to do some of the interviews for us with some of the other lads, then, will you? Yeah, absolutely. Get me involved. <laughs> we'll get you signed up for that, mate. And um, just on, in terms of uh, the cricket this year, um, obviously we're still no further forward knowing what's happening. I guess it's a little bit frustrating. You've had to come back up for uh, the back of a fantastic season, fantastic season for Gloucestershire. Um, you know, what, what are your thoughts about the cricket? How frustrating is it? And, and when you do get going again, what you, what are your hopes for Gloucestershire? Yeah, we obviously had a good year last year. It was good to um, one get promotion and two you know, come close again in our white ball comps. Um, so yeah, it would have been nice to try and try and add to that this year, obviously with the um, extra challenge of Division 1. Um, it would have been nice to sort of get an early benchmark of where we're, where we're at compared to everyone else, really. Um, and obviously myself, having had a good season last year and a, a good winter away playing, um, it would have been nice to sort of continue into this summer uh, in some good form. So... It's obviously disappointing for us all, but I think once we can get back, it'd be nice to to sort of maybe play some blast cricket and uh, sort of continue to develop our our side in that. And I think it'd be good to to get one step further than last year and try and make it to a finals day. I think that's what we all want to all want to achieve. Um, and regarding four day cricket, obviously stay in the divisions is is key. Um, I don't think we're expecting to go out there. And blow teams off the park. I don't think anyone is, but I think we'll know that we'll put in put in the hard graft and work hard and try and play the game the way we played it last year, which was obviously successful for us. Yeah, yeah. And and you just touched on about you you obviously had a, a good winter away as well. You you went with England A, toured Australia again, fantastic progression for yourself. Um, you know, I think been going well. But just tell us tell us about the experience of playing for England. Yeah, it was brilliant. Obviously, to go to Australia and play for them as well is is an even bigger thing. I think not many lads get to do that, um, play at grounds like the MCG. Um, yeah, it was a really good squad to be a part of. Like A lot of young lads sort of in a similar position to me on their first tour and new coaches as well. It was almost like a sort of a fresh slate. It was a lot of new guys who didn't really know what to expect. So to go there and be successful was really nice. Um, to work alongside some good coaches, obviously, Jonathan Trott, Dorse was there, Bruce French for myself um, was brilliant and some of the older, more experienced guys who have obviously played test cricket recently, the likes of Jennings, Sibley, Bess, Overton. So you, there was a lot of knowledge to sort of pit the brains and uh, as you said, it was a really good uh, development for myself and hopefully I can keep progressing in the same way. Sure, sure. And, and what, what's your sort of plan to, to break into the full England team? You, you, you're just going along really nicely at the moment. Did it just pretty much continue doing more of the same or going on a tour like that? Did it give you new insights into something you, you, know, you may need to adapt or change? Yeah, it, it gives you that sort of increased clarity of it's not just a numbers game, you know. So some guys have big numbers, but it's about sort of how you conduct yourself and how you, the way you're playing and the way you're scoring your runs. So 
I'm still still a little bit in the dark about where I am, sort of in terms of um, obviously being able to keep and and bat in the top order. Which one's going to be my main strength going forward? Um, I think for now, as I have been, keep working on both. Um, but obviously, dependent on what roles I'm I'm asked to play for Gloucestershire and how I, how that comes about, that's obviously going to going to feed into the way that I'd like to get into the England team. But it's nice to know that. If I can keep working on both skills, there's opportunity for both, obviously, having kept in the winter as well. Yeah, excellent. Okay, thanks very much for that, James. Um, just got a few few questions for you. Um, yeah. Basically, right. first one, which one, who would you describe as the most difficult opponent you've played against? Difficult opponent? I'd say... There's quite a few tough ones. I mean, Marnus Lavashan, was, he was difficult last year. He scored 300s or something against us. So did um, Hassan Azad for Leicester. So those two guys were really difficult to, um, to come up against. Obviously, I'm not a bowler, but being in the field and seeing how they went about it was um, really um, eye-opening. Obviously, they just clearly just loved batting and they knew exactly how they were going to go about it. So I'll go with those two. Okay. What, what about when you're, you're batting and someone's bowling? I probably get one of I'm batting. I hate the guys like Darren Stevens, Tim Murta. Those guys are particularly difficult. I think they're so experienced; they know exactly what they're doing, yeah. and they know that as soon as you try to do something to combat them, they've got another plan straight up their sleeve that they're gonna they're gonna put on you. So I think they're definitely hard to get on top of. Yeah, excellent. Okay, um, and on to um, the Gloucester or England changing room. Who's got the worst yeah. dress sense? Ryan Higgins. <laughs> no yeah, doubt about that. That was a quick one. Yeah, he dresses as if he's 20 years older than he is. He's the <laughs> oldest 24 year old in the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who's got the worst musical taste in the changing room? Um, Miles Hammond's up there. Oh, okay. He's got some terrible stuff, but he's also got some very good stuff. So I've, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a strange one. I think Benny Howell's got a, um, his wife's Argentinian so he listens to a lot of their native stuff which is quite strange um, but I'd say Hamo's got some of the weirdest taste yeah right okay you won't be happy when we mentioning him for that good one uh, who's the funniest player in the, in the team uh, Chris Dent's very good he's like he's like a kid still he's just got a, he's just manic he's always running around after his own kids but then whenever he gets clear of them he's, he's like our kids so he's <laughs> And he always playing pranks and all sorts, so um, I'll go with him. Okay, I and mean, the angriest player? Oh, angriest. There's a few. I mean, on the field, Higo gets in the battle a lot, so he's always got something to say to the batsman when he's bowling. Um, and Jack Taylor's got got uh, got it in him to be quite angry as well. I think, especially okay. after he's got out. Yeah. Excellent. And who, who would you say is the, you know, throughout the game? Who's the most exciting young prospect you see at the moment coming through? At the moment, from what I've seen, um, Ben Charlesworth's got a lot to um, a lot to offer. I think he's sort of unlike a lot of young lads. He's he loves his red ball cricket. He loves to bat. He just loves practicing. He loves to improve. So I think definitely as a top order batter going forward, he's, he's one to look out for. He's obviously started pretty well for us. So. Um, I'm hoping to see him a lot more for us this year. Excellent. Okay, James, thanks very much for your time. Hope you no stay safe and well, and, and hopefully we'll be catching up soon, mate, in, the, in sunny yeah. weather. And you, mate. I hope you're well. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the like button, and hit the bell to stay posted on all the other videos as soon as we send them out. Hope you enjoy the rest of them. Bye for now.